What's up, guys, and welcome back to another episode. This week, I'll be going over why I think you should be careful of your current exposure to risk assets, how you can recognize market tops, and of course, we'll be going over many different markets to plan for the week ahead. So let's get to it. All right, guys, before we jump into the charts, I want to go over something really important. You got to be extra careful listening to these words, right? Because you're going to misinterpret things I say. Um, so listen carefully. I don't think and I don't know uh, if this is the cycle top. It probably isn't, right? There's people on Twitter saying, oh, my God, there's... There's going to be so many people calling the top prematurely on this uh, on this run, during this run, during this cycle, whatever. But that is a very easy position to take, right? Because the actual top is only known in hindsight. Plus, it is like it is an actual it's a one day candle, which marks the top or even an, an hour. Right. So statistically, you're always going to be right saying I think most people are going to be calling the top prematurely. Uh, because calling the actual top is almost impossible so it's a very easy it's a non-position it's not even an easy position to take it's a non-position so yeah i agree most people will be calling no i apologize there are people who will be calling the top um prematurely or too early however i still think that in most cases that beats calling the top too late why do i say so in almost all cases, markets tend to go up with the uh, with a staircase, right? Stairway up, staircase up, and then the elevator down, meaning pretty much vertical downside price action. Especially in crypto, this this it's ridiculous, right? You can you can have weeks, sometimes even months of gains just completely evaporated within forty eight hours, which is which is fucking crazy. Um, but it happens. And of course, if you hear me say this, you'll be like, well, this cycle is different because fill in the blanks, which is one of the most important uh, top signals there is. Um, people saying this time is different, this cycle is different is a classic top sign, top signal. But again, I'm not saying this is the top, but I will say I have de-risked almost uh, completely. I have sold most of my alts. Um, I still have some positions running, but the biggest alt bags I had, I have now sold. Uh, does that make me a fucking idiot? Maybe, maybe. But the point is, and the, the beauty of this is, that if I sell, and I sell too early... I can always jump back in. There is absolutely no sin in buying your positions back. But many of you think I'm out of this now. I'm not gonna buy. I'm not gonna be buying back because that means I'll have to buy back. Uh, I'll have to uh, buy back higher, which doesn't matter, right? Don't look at a single coin and its price. Just look at your money, um, and and take any any asset class right whether it's um whether it's crypto or stocks or bonds or even real estate these are just vehicles to increase the value of the underlying asset which is dollars or euro or whatever now of course i'm going to hear you say or hear you think well my uh, goal is to stack as much sats or as much bitcoin as i can that is fine but the point i'm just making is you can always buy back um, if you believe you made the wrong decision by selling too early. Uh, if you're too late, again, that is, that is a, a difficult, um, uh, difficult thing to overcome because it is, it is just, it, your, 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 your profit is, is gone incredibly fast. It is gone incredibly fast. If this is your first bull run in crypto, you're going to be in for a pretty big surprise. Now, what are the actual, and I wrote them down because there's quite a few, but what are the actual top signals, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're part of uh, 
group chats um, where all you talk is crypto or stocks or whatever, you'll be seeing people just longing and buying everything, right? There's no real strategy. It's just buy this and buy this and buy A and buy B and buy C. Why? Because somebody told me it's going to go up. Why did you buy this? Because the name is pretty good. Why did you buy this? Because it's low market cap. Why did you buy this? Because normies are going to buy it. Whatever the case, it doesn't matter. Um, what matters most is that everything, everything everybody buys just goes up, right? It's like magic. You buy everything and anything and it all goes up. That is, that is, a, that is a classic uh, top signal. Um, it's, it's the easy mode of the cycle, right? It doesn't matter what you do, just buy and it'll go up. And then you, all you have to do is sell, but most people don't, and most people won't. Um, but still it's, it's something to keep in, uh, in mind. Now with that come the P and L screenshots. I've always, always remembered from the last two cycles, the moment you start sharing profit, um, screenshots, the moment you're like, holy shit. This is pretty nice. I want to share this. Usually a top signal. Usually a top signal. And I have to say, I have to add, top signals or tops can, can remain for a very long time, right? Even if you use an indicator like RSI on a higher time frame, uh, the RSI can remain overbought or oversold for a very long time. So, and I do think that being early or being late is the same as being wrong. Uh, if the market tops in like a month, I'm not going to be here and say, look, I told you so, because I'm going to be a month too early, which is the same as being wrong. But I just, you know, you just got to, you got to do what works for you. All right. And then we have within, I think it was within 24 hours, we had both uh, Jerome Powell, our friend Jay Powell, and we had Trump, both uh, bullish Bitcoin right? Uh, explicitly bullish Bitcoin. Jerome Powell, the head of the um, Federal Reserve, right, of the United States of America. We're not talking about Haiti. We're talking about the United States. Uh, he came out and said during a summit, I think it was during an interview where he said that Bitcoin isn't a competitor to the dollar, um, but it is a competitor to gold, as it, uh, he suggested or, or explicitly said it is, it is pretty much the digital gold. I mean, it doesn't get much more bullish than uh, that. Then we had Trump tweeting out, congratulations, Bitcoin holders, uh, $100,000, blah, blah, blah. We're going to make America great again. And yet Bitcoin, uh, the, the candle we put in uh, on that day didn't look great, right? It's an indecision candle. Uh, the optimist will say, well, it was an indecision candle and it nuked pretty badly, but look at the recovery, which is fair. That's a completely fair argument. And the pessimist will, of course, say, well, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Bitcoin tried to go for new all time highs and then really, really rejected um, convincingly, convincingly. Um, so this is why it's an indecision candle. It can be called both ways. Uh, so we'll have to see what, what, what this does, but it's something to keep in mind. I think personally, uh, a day like that, Jerome Powell coming out saying that, Trump tweeting out, uh, you want to you wanna close strongly and convincingly, and we didn't do so. Um, then you have the overnight millionaires right on Solana. People are buying meme coins, overnight millionaires popping up left and right. Then there's the market saturation. There's like 80,000 new uh, meme coins on Solana every day. Obviously, that is also happening because it's really easy to do so. Um, but still, you know, the, the, the market width is just expanding like crazy, which is also a sign of things overheating. Uh, NFTs catching a bit again, also usually a sign of uh, market reversals, mark, market tops. Uh, there's, you know, people who have never, never, ever been invested or interested in crypto who bought Ripple a few weeks ago and are now recommending people with more experience uh, than, than, than they have uh, to buy Ripple. Uh, there's, there's posts on Instagram, just regular people saying, you know, have you bought, Twi have you bought Ripple? Ripple's going to go to like 500 bucks. Um, uh, just people interested in buying. Uh, and the thing is, you know, it's like drugs, right? 
Not that I recommend taking drugs, but if you took, if you've ever taken drugs in your life, you know, you probably know that feeling of wanting to uh, experience that first high, that first rush. And you always intuitively uh, compare any high to the first one, right? And that is the same thing with bull markets. People will go, will go, well, I don't think this is the cycle top because in 2017, things were way crazier, right? Things were crazy. Uh, and this time around, I mean, it's not, it's not that crazy. Uh, not all alts have gone up. Uh, look at the dot-com bubble, right? Oh my God, those times were really nuts. Yeah, dude, you can, you can always compare the current cycle to the most ridiculous cycle you've ever, ever experienced. But um, I don't have to tell you that cycles uh, rhyme and they don't really repeat. History repeat, doesn't repeat and it, it often rhymes. Uh, meaning there's bits and pieces that look alike, but they're never going to be exactly the same. There are plenty of bull markets, either long ones or short ones, uh, which have ended way differently than the, uh, than the one in 2017, 18, which was really nuts. Um, so yeah, but of course there's also signs and arguments to be made that this isn't the cycle top. Again, usually you will see actual euphoria among uh, new market participants which isn't the case yet. There's euphoria, but it's mostly people who have been in the trenches for a very long time, right? Who are finally in profit. Uh, there's people holding XRP for like four years who are finally break even. Of course, that's going to be, uh, that's gonna be uh, uh, a time to be uh, celebrating. Uh, but it's not the tide that lifts all ships, boats, I don't know, ships, whatever. You know what the fuck I mean, right? Um... So, yeah, I don't know, because I'm unsure that is the reason why I'm still involved in markets uh, and I'm looking for new long positions as well. But again, I have de-risked for a very, very large part and I don't mind buying back higher. All right, I forgot one important thing, which is really important to be able to recognize market tops and also market bottoms which is your own emotion, your own emotional state, your own psychological reaction. Once somebody tells you this may be the top or this may be the bottom during bear markets, what you really want, which what, what people really want, usually investors, traders, they want to be buying um, their favorite assets as cheap as possible. Right? So at, at bear market bottoms, people will go, well, I just absolutely even deny the idea that this could be the bottom because in their minds they want to be able to buy 50 percent down of current prices which almost never happens people are at the bottom people are so bearish they cannot possibly conceive the idea that we may not be trending down or trading down lower than we currently are perhaps exactly the same thing when, when somebody tells you this may be the top, you're going to be thinking, no, man, that is, that is not possible. My, my portfolio has only done a 2x and I'm, I, was, I was told, I was promised, you know, I'm going to be rich after this run and uh, my portfolio is going to do a 10x or a 15x and I, I will not stop. I will not stop believing this is a bull run until I've done at least a 10x from here. Uh, I cannot conceive of the idea that prices may go down from here, man. It is just, it is just impossible for me to even grasp that. Um, which is the case right now, right? If you, if if I tell you, if you're really bullish, which I am too, by the way, but if if you are really bullish, and I'm telling you straight up, this could be the top. If you feel your entire being just going, no, man, that is, that is not fucking possible. And then we're pretty close to a top. Then we're pretty close to a top. The idea that we, we cannot and will not go down, um, the, the idea that going down is, is an impossibility. That's the danger zone, man. That is the danger zone. All right, so let's dive into uh, Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, the, I just showed you the uh, extreme uh, indecision candle. 
I'm not sure what to make of this yet. Uh, let's turn on the... Um, if this were to break out again convincingly, um, you could come in and uh, do the measured move target. So you take the move that went um, up until the consolidation period, right, which is here. Um, and then you take that move and you just duplicate it. And then you get to 132,000. Um, again, this isn't obviously, this isn't fucking exact science. Um, but measured move targets work pretty damn good. They work pretty damn good. Uh, some people will say, well, this isn't valid. You don't draw it like this. You draw it up until the uh, peak of the consolidation, and then you use the bottom of the consolidation, uh, and then you draw the measured, measured move target, which would be uh, here, uh, which is also fair and also fine, which is 123,000, uh, which is also a pretty, a pretty big target. So I am looking for a convincing move out of this structure to uh, position uh, long again. Uh, so that is my take on Bitcoin. It still looks great, by the way. Uh, just ignore everything I just said during the intro. Uh, just pure technically, this still looks really good, except for the one indecision uh, weekly candle that is probably going to close uh, like this as well. Uh, but technically, it still looks really, really, really good. And obviously, I'm also in the camp where people go, well, the recovery was really good. I don't, I don't, I, I really take note of that. Um, so let's go over a few open trades I currently have on. This is uh, Apple, which is a very obvious trade to me. Sometimes, sometimes the most obvious trades are the uh, either the worst or the best ones. Because people will go, well, this one is too obvious. Everyone, everyone's going to take in. Uh, so that's why it won't work. Uh, but there's a lot of people who think it's too obvious and therefore will not take it. Meaning it can work for the people who did take it. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, uh, so this is the uh, ascending triangle, which I really like, especially, uh, well, it's a continuation pattern. And we are literally at the all-time highs. Um, so we get the uh, double top, the uh, two touches to the uh, top of the triangle. We get the ascending uh, trend line. We get the 3% uh, uh, breakout confirmation. Uh, and then we have the uh, target for the symmetrical triangle, the ascending triangle, sorry which is about here. Again, this isn't exact science. It's like a region, right? If you draw it like this, you just draw a box and you start tr uh, taking profits around here. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not, I'm not going to be taking all profit at 278 exactly. I will be watching price action. Uh, I will be trailing my stop loss. I'm not going to wait and sit here and see this go up, 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 and then reverse, right? That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, I cannot tell you how to manage your own risk and how to manage your trades. I am still in uh, EVO, uh, which I have closed partially uh, because the uh, target was reached, uh, but the price action was so strong. I figured this uh, may well uh, continue. This is the target of the double bottom structure. Uh, which is exactly here where, where we uh, started to reverse. My stop loss is currently um, at the uh, white X mark over here because it is a uh, thrust candle through this these highs. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, probably going to be stopped out, but if uh, if not, that is uh, that is that is nice. Uh, so this is the uh, the evil trade. We had the double bottom, right? I've gone over this already. The uh, if you if you have a double bottom, you take the highest point bet between those two bottoms, uh, which becomes the neckline. Once you get a confirming um, daily close through the level, you uh, you go long, and you get the um, target reached, which is uh, which is nice, which is nice, which is nice. Uh, other other uh, targets will probably be um, this level here, which makes sense to uh, to target next, which is a huge move. Uh, 
uh, by the way i'm well aware i'll also be watching this level here which is a naked level which is a pretty good level to short at uh, which i will not do but it is a level to watch for a potential reversal then we have um we have uh, binance coin bnb i am long at the breakout ideally i want to wait and see the uh weekly close through here uh, we still have almost five hours left on this and a lot can happen in five hours as we know but the daily close was uh, convincing to me convincing enough to position long um so yeah we'll uh, we'll see if this trade continues i will be adding to the trip to the trade uh, i don't mind going with the trade if a um, if a convincing breakout happened that is binance coin then we have ether ethereum um yeah ether is is looking pretty good um we went over this last week we have huge uh resistance at the 4048 uh 4100 mark um which i do want to see uh, us close above uh, which i think will happen next week uh, i am already long uh, because we had the uh, breakouts through the two diagonal levels again as you are uh, well aware uh, uh, diagonal levels are much less reliable than horizontal levels so i will be waiting to add to the trade after a convincing close through the horizontal level now you could of course say well if we close through this level here don't you have the all-time high to worry about that is true but i don't necessarily consider the previous all-time high a a an important level um in my mind and uh, when i trade uh, a level becomes way more important for instance if it's well uh, if you can see it quite clearly on the weekly if there's been a more than one interaction with the level uh, meaning it has been respected a an all-time high is usually just a single point in time right uh, so there are no interactions just this one time meaning the the value of the level is drastically decreased to me or drastically decrease uh, decreases to me now if we go up and we we really reject at the uh, all-time highs right previous all-time highs trade back down trade back up again rejected the all-time highs the value of that level increases exponentially but at the get-go uh, previous all-time high isn't really a level i pay much attention to whereas these uh highs are just obvious right they're both horizontal they're both um diagonal uh, multiple interactions right here here could say this has come close then we have this as support we have this level here we have this level here so this area is way more important than the uh previous all-time high so if we close through this area here um that is going to be uh very important and very very bullish for ethereum um right so these are markets none of you actually give a fuck about probably but um the reason i'm i'm, I'm bullish on the euro dollar um well let me actually show you something uh, and i'm really not an expert on this topic but this is the commitment of traders uh, if you're interested in this topic do check out everything jason sorry jason shapiro uh, puts out he is uh, not just a legend but an actual um, expert on this topic but in short the commitment of traders uh, just shows you data literally how traders are positioned right there's three categories there's the commercials which are usually companies who actually own the physical stuff they uh, buy and sell so let's say um farmers right corn farmers uh, if you trade corn a, a a commercial would be uh, a company that actually owns physical corn um with with forex with currencies it's usually banks so those are commercials then you have large speculators which are hedge funds stuff like that pension funds 
And then there's the small speculators, which are just uh, retail traders. Now, if you look at the Euro FX futures, Euro futures, uh, what you'll see here, uh, and I'll just go over this real quick, you'll see that commercials are uh, extremely long. Now, net in absolute value uh, or in absolute terms, they aren't as long as they can be, right? Uh, this is the bottom chart because uh, this can go up way, way higher, right? You can see down here where they're net short uh, and, and very much so, whereas here they're only slightly net long. But the reason this says it is they're extremely long is because in relative terms compared to periods, periods in the past, they have really shifted their positioning from max short to much, much, much longer than they have been in a very long time. The last time commercials were net long was uh, September 2022, right? Which is two years ago. Now, the reason you want to look at commercials is because they're right more often than large speculators are. So the shift in positioning from uh, commercials is interesting, something I uh, watch, something I look at. Uh, and if you combine that with the fact, technically, that uh, we have this weekly level here, right? Um, which has been interacted with multiple times. We have it here, here. We got multiple weeks of price action at the low. And then we get the break here, right? Now, once you see this break, a lot of people will pile into shorts, which makes sense. Technically, it makes sense. And you get the confirmation by looking at the positioning from large speculators who are also uh, um, both net short, uh, but extremely short compared to um, what they have been for the last two years. Uh, so thinking or, or keeping in mind that large speculators are usually wrong or wrong most of the time, um, I think this is a bear trap. I think uh, a lot of people are going to be caught short here and they're going to have to start covering those shorts, which will hopefully turn into a, a short squeeze on the euro, which is why I want to be long euro and which is why I am long euro. Now, seeing a reading like this doesn't mean we're going to just fucking skyrocket into an immediate uh, short squeeze, right? And, and positioning can change pretty quickly. Um... But it is just something I, I look at, something to uh, to keep in mind. Uh, so I went sh sh long, sorry, at the last high pre uh, breakout, which is here, uh, which is where I went long. And I am now waiting for price action to develop. I am well aware we have a lot of ground to cover before this is going to start to look really bullish. Uh, we have the inverse head and shoulders which is a very nice uh, bottoming structure, which could potentially be a, um, a reversal um, pattern as well. Um, like so, right? What you want to see happening, though, is, is you want to cross through the neckline, which you can both draw horizontally as well as uh, diagonally. Uh, so we'll see. But if we cross, if we get the uh, break out, out of here, I think that'll be really bullish uh, euro, and I'll be looking to add to my euro position as well. That is the euro trade. Well, actually, every crypto market is kind of the same right now. Every position I took is uh, based on sort of the same uh, uh, breakout structure, right? You have this, uh, this, this high here, we get the breakout, I buy the retest, uh, and I'm now long. Uh, this structure is a lot higher, a lot bigger than the, um, the one from Avo. Uh, so my targets are higher up for this. Again, I am, of course, trailing my stop. My stop is currently here, um, which is a pretty big move if, uh, if we go back down all the way uh, from the highs, almost 18%. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what this does. And um, the reason I didn't put my stop below this candle here, which I wanted to, 
uh, is because I didn't think this breakout and this candle was convincing enough for it not to trade back below that candle again. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, that is idea. Then we have Litecoin. I am currently not long Litecoin anymore. Uh, I was, but I'm not because my uh, exposure was getting a little too big. Uh, however, if we get the weekly close like so, I will probably uh, reposition long again. Because look at this chart. It is a great, great looking chart. Now, uh, you could say, well, we broke out here, which is nice because you break out through these highs here, which is correct. But then you still have this structure here. Uh, which is uh, turning out to be resistance so far because this extreme high here is uh, is an important one as it is interacted with quite a lot right um so yeah i um you could position long after a break of this level but it also makes sense to position long a little bit earlier than that all right tau bit Tensor. Um, I am currently long uh, BitTensor. Uh, I think I've went over this. I went over this already, but this could be seen as a uh, cup and handle, right? Uh, with a huge breakout, uh, with a, with a huge target. If it does break out, uh, there's no weekly breakout yet, and there is not a, a thirty day ATR breakout yet. Uh, so I have a very very small position running. If we get the breakout through the 30 day ATR, either on the, uh, no, just on the daily or a uh, convincing weekly close through the highs here. So in a few hours, if we close, say, let's say here, uh, here, this is, this is not convincing. We got to get this a little uh, higher up. I will add to the position uh, for sure. That is Tau. Then we have Wild. Uh, I really like this chart, uh, so I am still long. Uh, we have the uh, diagonal here, which I didn't trade. I just marked it. Uh, what's much more important to me are these highs here. Uh, we get this beautiful candle, which acts as the breakout candle and as the uh, uh, stop loss candle as well. Uh, we get the retest two, which held up as support. So hopefully we get some, um, you know, bullish price action. Multiple take profit targets. Uh, one of his, uh, one of them is way higher up. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's looking good. Then we still have this fucking coin, Monero. Man, this is driving me nuts. Um, this is one of the better looking charts out there to me personally. Uh, we have the, the massive rectangle, right? Almost, almost three years, two and a half years going. And then we get this beautiful weekly breakout. I mean, there's just no way you cannot uh, consider this a breakout unless uh, you look at the extreme high here and you say, well, this is resistance, uh, which it is so far. But uh, the breakout out of this structure trumps the value uh, of this high here. Um, so yeah, there for me, there's no reason not to absolutely pile into uh, Monero, uh, especially with the Dino Coin meta, which you know Dino Coins have been going nuts, um, and I think people will want to look for the next Dino Coin to run. Um, seeing as Cardano and Ripple uh, have already gone absolutely insane. I think Monero will do really well. So I am looking to add to this trade. Um, not every chance I get, but uh, hopefully a few times. Hopefully a few times. The, um, the target is going to be the uh, rectangle target, which is about 255, 254. Uh, which is the moment I will start scaling out of this. But if things go really crazy, uh, especially because this has already been um, developing for over two and for two and a half years, I think the breakout is going to be more extreme, more aggressive than only uh, 255. I think we'll cover this high here, tag that, tag this high here, 
hopefully tag this high here as well. And if things go really, really crazy, um, tag the uh, all time high, which I don't think will happen, but you never ever know. Uh, Marcus, I want to short, I want to be short the, uh, and I am going to short the uh, Aussie uh, New Zealand dollar. Uh, reason for that is again, partially uh, the uh, positioning of uh, traders, commitment of traders, uh, which I won't go over now because it's kind of boring. Uh, and I think you get the point. Um, but the, uh, the chart technically and fundamentally, I want to be short this market. Uh, the only reason why I'm uh, not convinced yet is because all of these highs here, man, there's just so many highs that could turn into potential support, right? We could see something like this happen. This is also a naked level to go long at potentially. Uh, so not a huge fan, uh, but if we get to cross down here, turn it into resistance, then um, that's going to be a big short, but I will position short tonight already with a stop above this uh, daily high. Then we have the Aussie dollar. Uh, we also want to be short, but this is um, this triangle is way too big uh, for starters, which I don't really like. I mean, it's been going on for like three years and a half years it's just too big of a uh, of a pattern uh, however these are uh, these lows this trend line is very clearly respected so if we do break down below uh, i will be uh, looking to um, to be a seller of this market um, obviously keeping in mind that we have all the horizontal levels to cross as well but I think these are very important and the most important levels because it's a uh, triple bottom, right? So if we um, if we close down below here, I think that is uh, crucial. And I think these will not hold as support if we do maybe this one. But if that one breaks, oh, maybe. Then we're going to be in for a treat. And uh, Aussie dollar is one of the markets, um, one, of the, one of my better markets. Over time, my profit on Aussie dollar has been very, very good. Uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see what it gives. Then we have oil. I want to be a seller of oil as well. Um, the volatility is dropping, um, which is clearly seen on the chart. Uh, so I think there's going to be a big move soon. Uh, my... Um, preference is to the downside because that means gas prices will also uh, lower which is nice and we have oil I want to be a seller of oil as you can see volatility is is really dropping so I think we have a, a big move soon my preference is to the downside we have the um, we have the head and shoulders here, right? Uh, but then we don't have a breakdown. We don't have a breakdown through the neckline, but we also don't have an invalidation of the head and shoulders. The head and shoulder pattern is invalidated once we close above the right shoulder. So if I were too long uh, this market, I would probably wait for it to do something like this, right? Uh, but I do think it will resolve to the downside, but we'll have to wait and see. You can draw this both, again, uh, diagonally and um, uh, horizontally. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, let, let's see. My targets would be uh, down here, but I will keep this low in, in mind. This is a very big swing low, um, which could be potential support. But once this really starts selling off, I don't think... Uh, these individual swing lows are gonna are gonna hold at least not for long uh yeah i've already gone over bitcoin which i will want to buy uh same goes for there's a pretty uh there's um uh, fucking hell jesus bitcoin and doge look uh, kind of the same right there's a um, potential pennant forming um, but you want to see this resolve. You want to see a clear breakout through this structure. 
Uh, same goes for Doge. Uh, here too, you can draw the uh, the measured move, uh, which would be way way up, man. Which would be way up. Let me turn on a lock chart for this uh, because this shit is crazy. There we go. So you get the move. Let me put on the daily. Actually, you get the move um, to the uh, uh, consolidation structure. And once you get the breakout out of it, there's the measured move target of 134. So we'll uh, we'll see. It's a it's a really big move. I'm aware of that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is crypto and this is Doge because <laughs> uh, yeah, crazier crazier things have happened. Um, yeah, so far so good. Nothing this nothing about this screams bearish. I'm not bearish. I'm not bearish any crypto. Everything looks good uh yeah then we have uh pound british pound aussie dollar where we have uh, an ascending triangle as well um we have the three percent uh breakout so i want to see a uh, breakout through here and this would be my target which is the um which is the uh, height of the triangle um yeah man this is getting kind of boring um and I'm a little under the weather, to be quite honest, uh, which I seem to be every week. But that's what you get as a new father. Uh, but yeah, man, seriously, a lot of these markets are still looking really, really good. Do not be um, put off by the intro of this video. It's just something you have to keep in mind, man, because you got to protect your money at all times. I don't mind giving back some of my profits but i do really hate giving away my capital protecting your capital at all times is the most important thing you can do as a trader um yeah i'm just showing you these markets while i'm talking to you uh, just so you know what i'm interested in interested in for next week um all right guys i'm gonna head out i'm gonna log off uh let's hope crypto just keeps on pumping pumping pump that shit up however keep in mind what i told you things can get ugly really fast don't give away your capital give away some of your profit but not too much surviving in between these periods is what really really makes you a good uh trader uh and which is what which is what's going to make you the most amount of money over the years. It's not going to be one big trade, one big week. Of course, there's people who make it like that, who make it that way, but um, most people won't and most people don't. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. I really, really appreciate it. I appreciate your comments. So if you could drop a comment saying thanks, or I loved it, or I hated it, or you look like shit, that is all good. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, if you have questions, any markets you want me to look at, any questions you want me to address, um, please, please drop them in the comments below or shoot me a, a, a DM on Twitter or Instagram. And uh, I'll be talking to you again next week.